All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of SG Crypto. Hope you all have an awesome day. This is the second part of a six part series we are doing, covering every single protocol of Flare Finance, going from Flare X, Flare Farm, Flare Wrap, Flare Loans, Flare Mutual, and Flare Mine. Yesterday was Flare X, today is Flare Farm, and so on. Um, so before we get into anything, I just wanted to remind you guys that I did start a Discord for everyone in this community, uh, everyone that's been involved and everyone that's kind of just finding the channel. It's really just a place where you can ask questions and get a more timely response because, you know, I get a lot of questions in the comments of videos and I'm not always able to get to those as quickly as possible. And so this is really going to be the best place to get a hold of me, get a more timely response and to get an answer maybe from someone else inside the community. So. We got about 18 members right now. It's actually not, it's going pretty, pretty good. So, um, just wanted to remind everybody that that is ready to go. And the link to that, the invite will be in the description of this video. So today is Flare Farm and yeah, let's just get right into it. So Flare Farm, let's find this. So Flare Farm, yeah. Flare Farm allows holders to participate in non-custodial yield farming and token launch pads. Initially, launch pads we'll be getting into in a second down here in a little section here. Okay, so initially it will serve as the main point. These launch pads will, or Flare Farm as a whole, will serve as the main point initially for rallying the Flare ecosystem to, to participate in their share of earning the low supply primary governance token, YFIN. You know, we've always been very excited about YFIN as well as YFlare um, and getting it and getting as much as possible as well as SFIN in, in the uh, XFI network. So just because it is governance and allows you to participate in a lot of stuff that you will also, you'll be, we'll be talking about in this video. So as the network progresses, Fur Farm will serve as the home for many new token launch pads. Participating in earning the primary governance token can be done utilizing all primary F assets within the Flare network. Flare Farm and Flare X work hand in hand, meaning you will need liquidity pool tokens from Flare X to begin utilizing Flare Farm. For all of you that have been experimenting with XFi and going through the procedure of staking on Flare Farm, know exactly what this is. And for those of you who don't, so basically this is Flare X right here, and basically you will need to. Um, to, in order to participate in Flare Farm, you need to go to the liquidity section of FlareX and get your liquidity pool tokens. So you stake a 50-50 ratio on this liquidity section to then get LP tokens, which appear as like one token. So your two tokens to enter the liquidity pool, pool become one, and then you take those LP tokens that you get from FlareX here, and you bring those over to Flare Farm to then stake. Uh, so they do coincide, as they mentioned here. Um... And when it comes to like single asset pools, actually we'll get into that in a second, but single token pools, as it says here, single token farming pools are pools that do not require LP tokens to participate in. So those kind of pools will only need Flare Farm. You'll just go straight to Flare Farm and stake your um, Flare, YFIN, uh, whatever it may be, whatever FS that you choose. So now let's get into yield farming. So yield farming or liquidity mining begins by users deciding if they would like to participate in single or dual token farming pools. These farming pools will determine which tokens and how much of each you will need to begin farming in your selected pool. Single token farming pools are pools that do not require LP tokens to participate in. Participants can easily take part in the farming pool by staking the required currency. Dual, to dual token farming pools are pools that do require LP tokens to participate in. They provide a higher APY, but require the use of LP tokens, representing two tokens stored in the designated liquidity pool on Flare X, as we just kind of went through. So if you were to stake Y Flare and YUSD LP, um, those two would be staked on Flare X in a 50-50 ratio, and then you would receive one LP token to then bring over to Flare Farm and stake. And when you're doing these dual liquidity pools, these dual asset pools, you have to be aware of the risks and a permanent loss being the biggest one. And so risks you need to be educated on. None of this stuff in this video are financial advice and it should not be taken as such. And you need to educate yourself on the risks involved with these pools. 
I've covered a few of them in videos, but um, impermanent loss being the biggest one. And of course, ob the obvious one that the underlying assets that you're holding to then enter those pools. So while participating in yield farming, a holder earns the following. Number one, yield in the form of the tokens being distributed from the farming pool. So the tokens that you um, initially are holding. So let's say maybe you have, you're holding ADA and VeChain for a pool. Um, you would then be earning those tokens from the that are being distributed from that pool. Uh, secondly, you'd be earning yield in the form of fees accrued in the liquidity pool that your to tokens are participating in. And thirdly, the appreciation or depreciation of the underlying token assets being utilized. So for example, if you're holding ADA or v and VeChain, those assets can obviously appreciate or depreciate. So and then yield farming is non-custodial, which means that participants retain full control of their own funds Rewards are generated on a per block basis and are determined by calculating the APY, annual percentage yield, against your total stake holdings. And so retaining full control and as, as well as the rewards being generated on a per block basis. So once you stake your liquidity in these pools, you can immediately, the next second, take it out. Um, and so it's not locked up. It's completely liquid to you. And as well as this rewards being generated on a per block basis, as soon as you delegate them to that liquidity pool and provide liquidity every second that goes by well not every second but every transaction that happens you will be immediately earning rewards and so you can claim every five ten seconds every one second if you want obviously it's not financially smart to to claim your rewards every second but it just goes to show that you don't have to wait a whole 24-hour period to receive your rewards like a lot of um like a lot of DeFi spaces uh or networks i mean and so apy for each pool is determined by this following equation which is i'll hold the video here for a little bit and you guys can pause it if you choose so pool supply times the current y fin price in usd this is for their example of y usd up here why why flare and y usd and so the pool supply times the current y fin price in usd divide and then that would be divided by the total value locked in usd times 100% equals APY, which would equal your annual percentage yield. I've done the calculations uh, with an XFI for like specific examples of using like 100 bucks and I have $100 worth of a certain asset like SGB. I've gone through the equation uh, of how to do it in past videos and it should be in the title of one of my videos uh, if you guys are interested in learning exactly how to do that. An APY is dynamic, it increases and decreases as variables which affect it come into play. And those variables are market health, price history, total value locked, and the amount left to be mined. So now launch pads. So Flare Farm Launchpad is a user-governed token launchpad geared towards giving holders a chance to support projects hoping to build in and around the Flare Finance ecosystem. So this is for new tokens that want to be brought on. So launch pads are altered forms of yield farming pools. The farming pools are what we've just been talking about, where you're locking up a single asset or dual asset. Um, the launch pads are altered form of yield farming pools with different specified conditions than their liquidity mining counterparts. Unlike regular yield farming pools, launch pad pools do not require liquidity pool tokens and can only be participated in by joining with either Yflare or YFN, to YFN tokens, which as I mentioned, these this is a very important part of why you're going to want that Y flare and Y fin. It unlocks a lot more um, earning possibilities for you within this network. So tokens to be issued through the Flare Farm Launchpad are decided by a governance proposal. Governance proposals are they happen by Y fin and Y flare holders. Uh, new projects hoping to launch can submit their project details on the Flare Finance forums for public review and discussion. If the project passes public review, it can then proceed to submit a governance proposal that will receive votes either for or against its launch on the launch pad. And so you as a governance token holder will have the deciding, you will have a, uh, a vote as to whether a certain project gets launched on through launch pad or not. So let's say for example, our VeChain and ADA, let's say those are two proposals that have been brought to your attention as a governance token holder, and you choose that you'd rather have ADA than VeChain, then that token, if it gets the majority of votes, will be brought on. So if passed, the farming pool 
will automatically become active and holders of YFIN and YFLAIR can begin to participate in earning their share of the Launchpad distribution. So if ADA is the deciding vote, then YFIN and YFLAIR holders can then stake theirs and earn their share of the Launchpad distribution as an ADA or FADA because it'd be an F asset at this point. So while participating in a launch pad, three things will take place for all participants. Number one, your Y flare and Y fin is locked up for a variable amount of time decided by governance, usually between 14 to 31 days. So number two, you are automatically distributed your entire allocation of the token upon entry lockup in relation to the max amount of participation allowed in the amount you've locked up. So um, you will receive your FADA for our, for the sake of our example, FADA, you will receive the equivalent in relation to how much YFIN or YFLAIR you have staked. And thirdly, you begin to accrue YFIN from the launch pad per rewards period. You can withdraw accrued YFIN anytime you would like over the 14 to 31 days. So you can then claim that YFIN during this period of your YFIN and YFLAIR being locked up. You can claim that YFIN and then you could even restake that right back into this pool and start into the launch pad and start earning more and more and more. Uh, or you can take that Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi flare and stake it other places across the network. Uh, it's There's a lot you can do and there are strategies that will be gone over on this channel in the future. Um, so moving on, so once the launch pad concludes, holders of the token can begin trading the token on Flare X. Additionally, locked up Wi-Fi flare and Wi-Fi become available for withdrawal. This is after Obviously, the launchpad concludes. And projects may elect to provide multi stage launchpad pools that offer different participation limits, distribution rates, and locked lockup periods. Partic participation in all is not mandatory and is, of course, user preference, your preference. Projects who participate in utilizing the launchpad must provide both a fee in Y Flare or Y Fin, as well as a fee in the form of their token. So, the people that propose ADA and VChain coming on, they have to provide a fee in YFLIR and YF or YFIN, as well as a fee in the form of ADA, for the sake of our example. And so the launchpad fees are distributed as such. And this is these launchpad fees. So there's two different fees that they're referring to here. The launchpad fees are referring to YFLIR and YFIN, and token fees are re referring to, in our case, FADA. So the launchpad fees for YFLIR and YFIN are distributed as such. 33% is recirculated to the APY cloud, 33% to the foundation and 33% to the team and investors. And the fees from that 33% from the APY cloud can then be staked for by YFLIN and YFIN and where YFLAIR token holders. So you can additionally earn more fees from the APY cloud by being a YFIN and YFLAIR holder. And so, uh, you know, there's just another example of why earning those tokens as much as possible is important. Um, and then finally, those token fees from the F assets are then distributed 33% back to the launch, launch pad pools. So even more to be earned in the farming, 33% to the foundation and 33% to the team and investors. And then finally, governance can vote to request that the foundation burn their received supply if they would like to do so. If not, receive fees from the foundation will be vested and released monthly over one year to be utilized for operating expenses or grants to new projects. So that's really it. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, definitely reach out um, in the comments. But if you want a more timely response, as I mentioned, the crypto dis discord that we launched is definitely going to be more efficient for more timely replies. And um, as well as just hearing your guys' feedback and maybe some other videos that you guys want or projects you want me to cover as well as collaborations if you're another creative. So that I will leave all links in the description and have a great day.